Terraform with Teams. Uh, this was uh, posted in the Terraform channel and it relates, it, it partially relates to one of our office hours uh, at the end of last year uh, on tacos. And we should probably reply to that thread with that, um, with, with a link to that video. But let me read uh, Ophir's question verbatim here. So, hi, quick question. How do you work as a team over Terraform and other infrastructure as code? We're working on a uh, single dev stack, but sometimes two developers are adding a feature to the stack in the same week, having two different branches on GitHub, and we obviously, which we obviously want, but at the same time, we can't really let them work simultaneously without taking over the other developers' changes. One option would be to have two stacks, but we are trying to find a different solution uh, due to internal reasons. So let me go through this uh, more, more specifically on the Terraform side than the CloudFormation side or other tools. But this is a very real problem when you're working with Terraform, for example. So let me bring up an example. Um, all right, you guys have a Terraform project. This Terraform project is uh, building up a, um, a, a workspace that has an S3 bucket and maybe um, a, a, an RDS database. So uh, develop, one developer wants to resize this database uh, because uh, in the dev environment, it no longer you know, uh, pulls its weight. Uh, you're running more queries, the data size, uh, the data set has increased. So he opens a pull request to increase the size of the database. At the same time, uh, it was realized that the S3 bucket that was provisioned as part of this module had two open permissions. So another pull request is open for that. And you want to test this and it's in the dev environment and both these pull requests are open at the same time. Terraform does locking, but that's different. Terraform locking is like at the same time, we are trying to modify the same state file. It will prevent that. But it's not talking about the infrastructure as code piece where we are on the Git side, on the GitOps side, are trying to modify the same workspace uh, in two different pull requests. And this is one of the nice things that was solved uh, with Atlantis. So if, um, if your team is looking to uh, practice GitOps with Terraform, there's a, there's a lot of options out there. Atlantis is kind of like the original option for Terraform. Um, there's a nice site, runatlantis.io. And they have some screenshots here. Let's see here. If, um, so these screenshots don't actually show what it does, but basically what happens in Atlantis is when that pull request is opened, that project folder on GitHub is locked until that pull request is merged. So if anybody else tries to modify source, con source code in that project folder, it won't let them apply that until the other pull requests are merged or the locks are freed on Atlantis. I presume many of the other uh, options for uh, Terraform as for a continuous delivery of Terraform. So we're talking uh, Spacelift, we're talking Scalar, we're talking Terraform Cloud, we're talking M0. They probably have some solutions for this, but I don't know specifically if they solved that problem. This is a perfect segue though into a similar question that I'd like to talk about at length, maybe a little bit after this, which, which would be anybody using GitHub Actions with Terraform and how are you doing it? And just a spoiler alert here, I would strongly advise against doing it in place of using one of the continuous delivery platforms for Terraform for reasons like this. Doing locking in GitHub Actions for this is non-trivial thing. Yeah, you can implement anything, but you're, but suddenly your GitHub Action is looking uh, a lot different from this very simple thing that just runs Terraform apply in a plan in one step and Terraform apply in another step to a, to a testing monstrosity uh, that looks like, uh, you know, what we do in our actions here for uh, uh, for testing Terraform. So, hey Eric. Yeah. 
just to add, there is, uh, this is Pepe. Um, oh, Pepe and... is, uh, by the way, just a background here, Pepe, he is one of the maintainers of Atlantis. So uh, let's see what he has to say. Yeah, there has been a lot of development lately um, in Atlantis, and one one of the of, of, of one of the new PRs that I think is go is going to get merged. There is a few more reviews to be done on it. Is actually the ability to disable any locking mm. in Atlantis. So, and, and and there is many reasons why you will want to do that, and and one of the reasons could be that you you might actually have some automated way to run apply in your PRs after they are reviewed. So you can actually just don't have any locking and have many, many PRs against the same repo. And mm. um, so it is, um, yeah, it's being reviewed at this point. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't... Yeah, and they added, uh, and, and another thing is going to be added too is OPA, uh, OPA uh, policy, uh, uh, conf test running in Atlantis nat natively. So you could actually then eventually maybe tie the locking with the uh, policy too. So that's, that's that would be probably the longer term, the better solution in the long Correct, run would yeah. be an OPA policy that says, uh, yeah, that does something about that. That's the challenge though, coming up with that library of uh, Ooh, yeah, no, Rego policies is. that you're going to want for open for that. Yeah, yeah it is so, Lyft. Lyft is doing that work. Oh, Lyft is doing that? Yeah, one of the the the, the new uh, maintainers is uh, comes from Lyft. Actually, Lyft has a team of people working for Atlantis full time. Really? For the for the internal Atlantis version. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So they are releasing they are releasing uh, uh, features back to the Atlantis since they added uh, one of the developers in it. Oh, very cool. So they're upstreaming that. That's good news. Yeah, and they don't use any groups, which is very interesting. And they don't use the, the, yeah, yeah. What is uh, actually on that uh, topic? What What's uh, the status of the GitHub Pepe, team? Allowed? Pepe has been very, very, very lazy and he hasn't write the test yet. And that's why- Bad Pepe, been, bad Pepe. It, it, yes, <laughs> so you can ping Pepe and ask him. But uh, it has been approved, but it requires, uh, I need to create uh, four or five tests, okay. which, because he doesn't have any tests. And after that, it will be merged. I saw that uh, the thumbs up has grown to uh, 51 or 52. I know, to, uh, it's crazy. That. So that's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, this came to light again. Um, so thanks. After many years. <laughs> After many years. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I have another question related to Atlantis, Pepe, since uh, you're the most current on everything going on there. With the Rego work, and this is the, oh, sorry, with the open policy agent stuff, is the open policy agent stuff going to allow um, actions so that uh, you can set up a relationship where like when this project is applied, this project will reapply? Mm, I don't think that they, I think that, that they, in, in the call, they mentioned that they were doing something like that, but I don't think this, this PR has those changes in. I don't think so. Okay. No, that's no, one of the really no, nice no, things no. in space lift is you can set up an OPA Rego policy that um, will uh, uh, trigger when a dependent project is, uh, for example, applied. Correct. You have another yeah. project that you, why this is so important is like, and this also relates to working with Terraform and teams is if you're using remote state in your projects, that remote state is not in source control. But that remote state can change without reapplying this project. So how do you set up that relationship? So when this project is updated, like when this folder of Terraform code changes, this folder of Terraform code automatically re reapplies. Basically, standard problems working with uh, continuous delivery in a mono repo, which most Terraform uh, pro uh, organizations are. The, that, that PR that you have the mouse, uh, the, the one on top is the one I'm talking about. Um, implement new policy yeah. check workflow. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. To that point, Eric, um, about, you know, remote state being kind of tracked outside of version control. Um, it still sucks because you still have to, there's still probably changes to that, you know, dependent project on the upstream project. So it's going to run a plan against that dependent project even before the remote state changes. And that's likely, you know, if it's a new output from your upstream project, 
then it's still go it's going to fail because that new output isn't in the remote state yet. That's going to fail. But then the second time, once that upstream project actually applies and that remote state is populated with the new output, then it'll apply correctly. But it's like the the relationship there, the dependency graph there is kind of ugly and there's no way to like easily call that out. So, um, um, and I know you're working with this and submitted some PRs for our uh, Terraform cloud module that uh, manages some of this stuff. Uh, Matt, I'm curious if you worked at all using the triggers here, which I is did. how we did that for Terraform cloud. Yeah, and that you know, that's what I'm talking about is that it's it solves the problem, right? Because you know if your project that uses remote state, we're calling that the dependent project. Um, you know if that has changes uh, that require that remote state, it's still going to plan when those changes get merged, and plan and try and apply when those changes get I merged for the remote. State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll fail because that remote state isn't there yet. It needs to wait actually on that upstream project for yeah. that upstream workspace to complete. Um, yeah. So it, it solves the problem, but it's also painful because it's like you add another plan and failure into the pipeline and, you know, yeah. Terraform Cloud never looks like there's not an error. It looks like there's errors all the time because, you know, there's, yeah. you can introduce things that are just normal day-to-day -day changes and yet they they add something that, you know, we, we don't have a way of describing at least the Terraform cloud of, you know, Hey, wait until this remote state populates before yeah. you plan. It, that is a, yeah, that's a, uh, that is a edge case uh, that is not uncommon uh, and unfortunate. So in this case here, like we have first project and second project, what if second project depends on the uh, remote state of first project? Well, then we can add triggers here in second project that says basically second project should trigger when uh, first project is updated. Um, however, if we're modifying first project and second project in the same pull request, there is a race condition there and second project will probably fail the first time uh, until first project runs, then first project runs and then second project will will be applied based on the trigger. So yeah, this stuff is hard to solve. Uh, and uh, I, what it really requires is a, is a, a less optimal approach, which is changing your development approach to try and not change multiple projects in one PR. Like adding outputs to uh, the first project, that should be one feature uh, release. And then the next one is uh, consuming those outputs in another project. Yeah, requiring the team to work on the, the workflow part instead of having the system be aware of it, which, you know, I mean, that's, I think that's acceptable. This isn't like a huge deal. It ends yeah. up getting to the, the end result. It's just something that, you know, you were mentioning remote state and within the like idea of Terraform CD and it's a pain. There's a lot going on. <laughs> It, and it's this thing like uh, to bundle or unbundle your modules, right? You could, it, all this is solved if you just put everything in your root module and Terraform does it for you. And then the blast radius is suddenly though, your entire infrastructure. Ah, so then we re-implement <laughs> it with less, with less powerful tools, lesser gods and uh, run into problems when, when they don't work. 